Hello there, I'm Mia Granny along with Lynn Cannon in the KHU 11 News Studio. We're pretty excited. We have a really big event that is coming up April 8th, a total solar eclipse. And KHU 11 News has been all about this. In fact, we're having a little party along with yes. our friends at Space yes. Center Houston, a viewing party to witness this really rare event. Okay, so if you know anything about Mia, she likes a party. <laughs> so we're gonna have it April 8th at Space Center Houston. Mia and I will be there along with David Paul. And while we are there covering this eclipse, we're gonna be talking to experts explaining exactly what is going on. It's called the Great American Eclipse. Uh, our coverage starts at noon that day. Best viewing that day, we're told, when it's gonna be like mostly dark in the middle of the day is at 1.40 in the afternoon. Afternoon. Really exciting stuff. It is. You know, here's the thing. Since it's at 140 in the afternoon, we kick off at noon. It's a great plan to make it an extended lunch break that day. Start tuning in. We'll be streaming. We'll be on air with our coverage. Get prepped for what's to come because there are some in and outs that you need to know ahead of this total solar eclipse. You're going to need to wear special glasses. You'll want to protect your eyes. We have more information about that in the meantime on our website, KHU.com. We've done stories on which glasses you need to be able to witness this phenomenon. Yeah, show sure, Mercedes has done those stories and you'll want to tune in while you're having this party and having your lunch you'll have your glasses on we'll have glasses on it's going to be a style show it's going to be fun <laughs> it's going to be so great so be sure to join us april 8th as we stream and go live across all platforms yes it's space center houston along with our experts there we're looking forward to it and we can't wait to see you see you soon On April the 8th, the Great American Eclipse will have people looking to the heavens to see the moon pass between the sun and the earth. But to look up, you need to protect your eyes and shop smart. In a recent press conference, NASA talked about why all glasses are not created equal. We do want to warn that there have been some um, fakes that are, are out on the market um, that we witnessed previously and, and are currently witnessing um, on, on you know major online sellers. So how do you protect yourself? Look for ISO certified glasses. They should be marked on the box and the glasses. And to be extra safe, you should inspect them. If torn or scratched or otherwise damaged, don't use them. You can also grab your cell phone and test them out. You hold up your cell phone camera, there's a flashlight, and if you use these to look at the cell phone camera, you should only see a tiny point of light and absolutely nothing else. And be careful who you buy from. The American Astronomical Society has a list of reputable vendors of eclipse glasses on their website. If you don't have the glasses, you can still use an eclipse viewer, but it should meet ISO standards or you can use a pinhole protector. We have all that information for you on our website, KHOU.com. Now, what if somebody still has the glasses that they used for the 2017 eclipse? Can they still use those? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of people still have them in their closet. You can, but you want to make sure they're ISO certified and you can look for that seal right here on the glasses. You also wanna make mm. sure these filters here are not punctured, scratched, or torn. Well, good for those folks who still have their glasses. I have no idea where mine are, but for, pe for people who want to take pictures of the eclipse, is that okay to do with your glasses on? Yeah, that's also a good question because everybody wants to get out their cell phone. Uh, NASA experts say do not use your eclipse glasses with cameras, binoculars, or telescopes. The con concentrated solar rays can actually burn through the filter and hurt your eyes. So Ooh. important tips to kind of be aware of as we approach the big day. The great American eclipse almost upon us, and there's never been a better time to be a Texan. Umbrophiles, also known as eclipse chasers, are searching for the best spots to see this celestial spectacle. And the answer is simply... Deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> the path of totality crisscrosses our great state, but you'll need to leave H-Town if you want to be plunged into darkness for a few minutes. If you want to be one of the first to see it, head on down to the border town of Eagle Pass, where you will spend four minutes and 24 seconds in totality. The Texas Hill Country has prime viewing spots. Kerrville and Hunt will be in the dark for four minutes, 25 seconds. And the tiny town of Ingram will spend the longest time in totality at four minutes, 26 seconds. Ennis is an excellent choice. 
fields of beautiful blue bonnets as far as the eye can see, and 4 minutes 22 in totality. Big D just shy of the 4 minute mark at 3 minutes 51 seconds. We don't want to go to Dallas. Of course not. Then head northeast to Sulphur Springs, where you will spend 4 minutes 21 seconds in totality. As you can see, there are plenty of places to choose from, and most of the towns we mentioned are hosting viewing parties and festivals, making it fun for the whole family. Trust us, totality will be totally worth it. April's total solar eclipse is the perfect opportunity for folks of all ages to totally geek out about space and science. And it's an especially exciting time for meteorologists. There are a few ways that eclipse could affect the weather. First, anyone viewing it from within the path of totality will notice a temperature drop. Under clear skies, temperatures should drop 5 to 15 degrees. During the 2017 eclipse, temperatures in Carbondale, Illinois dropped about 5 degrees during totality. There was an even more drastic drop in the 2001 African solar eclipse when temperatures tumbled from the low 80s into the upper 60s. We can also experience an eclipse wind. Measurements from the 2017 eclipse in the U.S. and 2015 in the U.K. showed winds changed direction and dropped during totality. When the sunlight returns, winds quickly increase as temps rise, which can result in winds stronger than they were before totality began. The eclipse could even help thunderstorms develop. If the air temperature drops at least 10 degrees in the path of totality, it could create a zone of cool air that will sink and spread out. This cooler eclipse breeze will dip under the warmer air outside the totality zone. That could create lift for clouds and maybe even thunderstorms, but weather conditions would need to stack up perfectly for us to see the eclipse breeze in action. We will also want to keep an eye on the radar for critters. When the moon blocks the sun, bats will emerge from their caves to feed, and we can actually see this on radar. Even better, you could possibly see this in person at the Waw Drive Bridge in Buffalo Bayou Park. So here's hoping the weather cooperates on April 8th. I've got my fingers and toes crossed. Millions of Texans are getting front row seats to a spectacular celestial event in April, a total solar eclipse. Many of us remember the last one that happened in August 2017, and according to NASA, this year's will be even more exciting. The first and most obvious reason, a wider, more populated path. 2017's path of totality ranged from 62 to 71 miles wide, with about 12 million people inside the path. This time, the path is 108 to 122 miles wide and crosses right through the heart of our great state. In even more densely populated areas, an estimated 31.6 million people live in the path this time. There will also be a longer time of totality, up to 4 minutes and 28 seconds versus 2 minutes 42 seconds in 2017. In 2017, the sun was nearing solar minimum, a quieter time for our start. This year, the sun will be in or near solar maximum when the magnetic field is more active. So when the moment comes to see that breathtaking corona, viewers could see streamers and prominences, bright curls of loops coming off the sun. There's even a chance to see a coronal mass ejection like this one. The April eclipse is also providing NASA with several research opportunities that will build on what was studied in 2017. NASA's Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter will provide insights from the corona itself. There is no question this will be a historic event. That's why we're proud to announce an exclusive partnership with Space Center Houston. Join us for an Eclipse Watch Party on April 8th. Do total solar eclipses affect animal behavior? According to NASA, the answer is yes, but the reasons are not fully understood. When totality happens on April 8th, temperatures will drop and some stars will become visible. These changes can trick certain animals into altering their usual daytime behaviors. Nearly all of the evidence we have on this is considered anecdotal. People have reported hearing crickets chirping and frogs croaking. Others observed gnats and mosquitoes swarming, bees returning to their hives, and chickens going home to roost. During a total solar eclipse in July 1991, researchers found that orb weaver spiders began to break down their webs, and researchers in Mexico saw some nocturnal bats appear, seemingly tricked by the sudden darkness. 
In 2017, an astronomer in the Galapagos Islands saw dozens of whales and dolphins swim to the surface about five minutes before the eclipse began. As for our pets at home, dogs might be a little impatient and start pacing back and forth. Cats won't give a hoot about an eclipse because, well, they're cats. Plants that are in the path of totality have a loss of photosynthesis by an estimated 10 to 20 percent. Other changes observed include drooping leaves, closing or opening of buds, and changes to sap flow. The NASA-funded Eclipse Soundscapes project is enlisting the public's help to collect all of the sights and sounds of the eclipse. You can learn more about that at khou.com slash eclipse. We are a dynamic science and space exploration learning center. Since 1992, Space Center Houston has been connecting the community with space. And the education role is, is important because that's how we work and inter interact with the community, particularly schools. This week, schools are top of mind for Space Center Houston as they work to fill 5,000 of these boxes for classrooms across the greater Houston area. We are packing our eclipse in a box. Space Center Houston says they want to make sure students have a fun and memorable experience on Eclipse Day. You've got your glasses to be able to celebrate safely. And then as you go through this guide, there's a materials list. And, you and hopefully learn something new through all the activities provided. The teachers can then work with the students to demonstrate what is exactly happening. And then the final piece is really what can we learn from the eclipse? So what is the science that can come from it? More importantly, they want to make sure teachers have what they need. Need. We've done a lot of work with listening to teachers, listening to classrooms and what, what they need and what they want. So this is a way that we can just supplement that day. We can give them some tools, we can give them all the resources they need so they don't have to go out and hunt it down. All of the activities inside the box were created by NASA experts. A key, a key component of what we do is we want authentic, real STEM experiences. So the best way to do that is to make sure what we're doing is real. In the end, they just hope to bring students closer to space and maybe inspire the next generation of space explorers. We want to give students that opportunity to experiment, to do real science in the moment so that, you know, maybe they see an opportunity for themselves as they go forward. In Houston, Jalissa Garza, KHOU 11 News. Get your glasses ready. The Great American Eclipse will be an unforgettable experience for millions across the country. That's especially true for the folks in the 155 mile wide path of totality. They will experience between three and a half to four minutes of complete darkness. But... Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, the greater Houston area sits just outside the path of totality, so folks here will only see a partial eclipse, just like we experienced back in 2017. For the city of Houston, the deep partial eclipse begins at 12.20 in the afternoon, and by 1.40, 94.4% of the sun will be blocked by the moon. That's called eclipse magnitude. The magnitude increases as you move west and north. Viewers in Katy will see 95.3% magnitude at approximately 139.29. Conroe gets 95.8% at 140.59. If you want to make a quick run up to Bucky's in Huntsville, you'll get nearly 97% magnitude at 141.27. However, the magnitude goes down the farther southeast you go. So Galveston, for example, will see 92.1% magnitude at 140.27. Now, some of you may be asking, what's the big deal? After all, total solar eclipses happen every two to three years, but the U.S. won't see another one spanning coast to coast until 2045. So that makes it a pretty rare event and one worthy of spending a few minutes on April 8th gazing at the sky with proper eyewear, of course. 12 million Texans live in the path of the eclipse, and while we expect it to be dark, we don't want a blackout. 
So we verify, will the eclipse have an impact on the state power grid? Our sources include ERCOT, NASA, and Rice University Associate Professor of Environmental Engineering, Daniel Cohen. Right now, solar power generates at times as much as a third of the state's electricity. When totality happens in parts of Texas, solar farms along the path of the eclipse will see a significant drop in production because the sun's light will be obscured by the alignment of the sun, moon, and Earth. When this happens, Texas has other resources to ensure the lights stay on. So when that solar power drops off, it should be pretty easy for other sources like natural gas to pick up the slack. In early February, ERCOT released a report noting the April 8th eclipse, saying in part, this event will have an impact on the solar power production in the region between approximately 12.15 p.m. and 3.10 p.m. It continues, ERCOT expects to use all available tools to maintain grid reliability. Overall for the power grid, this, this should be a non-event if ERCOT manages it properly. They've gotten pretty used to doing that around sunset on many days. According to the schedule obtained by the KHOU 11 Verify team, ERCOT has an 11 days long plan to get its marketplace of power suppliers ready for the eclipse. They will monitor the weather for any changes that could warrant an increase in demand. What's also making this event uneventful? The eclipse is not happening when there's high demand on the grid, like during a Texas heat wave. When it's blazing hot outside, Texas relies most on its solar power generation to keep those air conditioners running. So we can verify the eclipse will have an impact on the state power grid, but while it may be darker outside, the state should not be left in the dark. With your Verify, I'm Cheryl Mercedes. Hello there, be your granny along with Lynn Cannon in the KHU 11 News Studio. We're pretty excited. We have a really big event that is coming up April 8th, a total solar eclipse. And KHU 11 News has been all about this. In fact, we're having a little party along with yes. our friends at Space yes. Center Houston, a viewing party to witness this really rare event. Okay, so if you know anything about Mia, she likes a party. <laughs> so we're going to have it April 8th at Space Center Houston. Mia and I will be there along with David Paul. And while we are there covering this eclipse, we're going to be talking to experts explaining exactly what is going on. It's called the Great American Eclipse. Uh, our coverage starts at noon that day. Best viewing that day, we're told, when it's going to be like mostly dark in the middle of the day is at 1 40 in the afternoon really exciting stuff it is you know here's the thing since it's at 1 40 in the afternoon we kick off at noon it's a great plan to make it an extended lunch break that day start tuning in we'll be streaming we'll be on air with our coverage get prepped for what's to come because there are some in and outs that you need to know ahead of this total solar eclipse you're going to need to wear special glasses you'll want to protect your eyes we have more information about that in the meantime on our website khu.com we've done stories on which glasses you need to be able to witness this phenomenon yeah show mercedes has done those stories and you'll want to tune in while you're having this party and having your lunch you'll have your glasses on we'll have glasses on it's going to be a style show it's going to be fun <laughs> it's going to be so great so be sure to join us april 8th as we stream and go live across all platforms yes it's space center houston along with our experts there we're looking forward to it and we can't wait to see you see you soon